Hi guys, it's Katie here again from Bella Creativa and I am just sitting here making myself some little paper beads with some paper scraps I've got and I thought I'll turn the video on and show you what I'm doing. Um, so um, I know that there are lots of videos on um, uh, YouTube already about how to make um, paper beads so I don't know how much I am um, contributing to the conversation about how to make paper beads but uh, I thought I'll show you how I make mine because you know maybe it's the way you'd like to make it or you can go and have a look at some of the other videos and then decide for yourself. So um, I've seen a lot of videos on uh, YouTube about making paper beads and um, they just um, grab a piece of paper and um, put it into strips, make into strips and start rolling. It might be magazine paper or practically anything. And the, those beads look great, except for me, they don't have a lot of consistency. They don't, they're not all the same width um, or thickness. And I like mine to be um, the same thickness. So. I've just cut these little bits of cardstock. I use cardstock into one inch strips and my strips are six inches long. And um, this is what I use to make my paper beads. So my paper beads look like this. These are the tube beads. And you can see I've made them out of pink cardstock and white cardstock. Um, and because I'm using the same piece of, uh, same size and thickness of paper, they always turn out the same. So that's the tube beads. And then there's these ones here. I'm not sure really what they're called, um, which we'll also do today. But let's start with these ones. So I like to use my scraps of cardstock to do this. And I cut them down into one, um, six inches across by one inch wide. And the cardstock I always use is this cardstock here. It's 65 pound, 176 um, GSM. So it's quite a nice weight for rolling. So I use this in my junk journals and in my mini albums, which is why I always have scraps. So um, that's what I use. And this pink cardstock here is um, from the same brand and is the same thickness. So I definitely recommend something around that thickness um, that works pretty well in my experience. So that's what I use. Let me pop that away. So once I've cut these down into these little strips, then I grab myself a cocktail strip and I have a, a stick and I have a whole little container full of them. And I just roll. So I don't have a bead roller, I just use my cocktail strip, stick. I want to say strip. <laughs> um, and I just hold my little piece of cardstock um, Sort of you know halfway along i don't want it down here because then you'll get an inconsistent um hole and i like cocktail sticks because they give you a, a decent size hole so um that's my choice i don't um and i'm also i'm pressing pretty hard and i'm not sure that a, a toothpick would, would 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 withstand my rolling but there you go so you might have a bead roller which would probably be even easier but i don't so I just hold the paper with my two index fingers against it and then sort of roll it around and sort of grab it with my thumbs as it comes around. So like that. I don't know if you can see that. I just roll it around like that. But, and that's got to be the hardest part of the whole thing. And keeping it firm. And then, when I'm happy with that, and sometimes it might take me a couple of rolls, I just roll. So we're trying to keep it pretty straight, but it doesn't matter if it goes a little wobbly. We can fix that later. So I'm just rolling all the way up. I don't put any glue on it until I get to the end. So roll, roll, roll. Roll, roll, roll. And then when I get to about here, you can see I'm not straight, but it doesn't matter. We can, we can fix that. Then I get a little bit of glue. Now you want a glue that's pretty quick to grip and hold. I use Tiger Grip Glue by Helmer, but I'm here in Australia, so I have to use what's available here. 
but if you have a glue that you like and grips quickly then that's the one to do so then I've rolled it all the way around and I'm just I just held it with my finger for um, fingers for a couple of seconds and then I might get my bone folder and just give it a little little rub like that to make sure it's stuck and you can see it's not straight but I can pull it off and then I can just because I've only used glue on the outside I can sort of tap it down so now I have a nice th um, tight tube should we do that again let's do it again so I'm just going to roll that onto with my two fingers and roll it around and then off we go roll 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 I'm holding it I am holding it pretty tight but you know it takes a little while the first time I, I did these I had very sore hands by the end of it because I was holding it really tight I was really worried that they were going to come apart okay so then a bit of glue on here so you you definitely get used to how much pressure you need to apply roll it up just like that so I'm not doing anything different I don't think than anybody else who makes paper beads or and might have done a video before I just like the consistency of using the same kind of base material and I can just pull it off and tap 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 it down and then I have another bead and it's you know they're really consistent they are the same thickness both ways now if you were to miss that last little edge and you had a little bit that was hanging off that's no problems you just grab yourself an emery board and just file the top of it really gently until until it's nice and flat and you can do both sides but we're not going to see the ends when we're finished so we don't need to worry about that okay then they're a bit plain so now I like to put a little bit of pattern paper on so the paper I'm using today is just some little scraps I've got left over from making a junk journal so these are all my little scraps and I've just cut them into one inch um, long pieces of um, scrap paper so this is copy paper I've been making a junk journal and these are just really random little scraps so now I want to cover this little guy here in this paper so but I don't want to use all of this so what I'll do is I will just roll it on until it comes back over on itself so that you can't see any of the bead um, core and then I'll just grab a little pencil and make a mark and then that will tell me how long my pieces need to be so then I'll get out my cutting board again and I'll just align that up and it is like I don't know one and it's not like one and an eighth or so that's that's what it is for me so you will need to work that out for yourself so then I can just go along and trim up all my little pieces to be that um, that length because I am all my beads are going to be the same and then you get a long way out of your little beads let's do a little bit of this one too I like this a little bit here so I just cut up a little piece of that and do one of each of those okay so I'll just put those away great way to use up those tiny little scrappy pieces you've got an inch little just over an inch square you've got enough to make a little bead okay so then I'll just take my little my little strip and I'm going to put some glue on one side just along here Try not to use too much glue because I'm really bad at that and then I'm just going to put it on my bead like this I'm going to try and make it fairly straight like so hope you guys can see okay okay make sure that's pretty well stuck there and then I'll put a bit of glue on the rest of it not too much because it's pretty strong glue and then I'll just roll it around and join it up 
and then I'm just going to run my bone folder down that seam a little bit. I could roll it on the, on the bench a bit. And there we go. Now, I've got a little bit sticking off the top. I'm just going to quickly knock that back with my emery board. But we're not going to see it. It's just going to make it for a neat finish. And that side looks okay. So that's one little bead. Okay, let's do one of these. Where'd my other bead cord go? There we go. Okay, so a little bit of glue along this edge. And then I'm going to stick it to my bead. Like so. Whoops. Sometimes it doesn't all, all go beautifully, but wait, you know, wait, I'm going to show you how to fix it. <laughs> I'm all about fixing up mistakes. And that's it. So this is really good to do at night when you're watching TV. Um, you know, if you've, especially if you've cut up all your little pieces, all you have to do is just sit there and roll. There's that one. So that one's got a little bit sticking out as well. So I'll just do this. Get that little bit off the edge. There we go. What about this side? So this piece must, I mustn't have cut it very straight. I thought it was an inch, but it was a little bit rough. But that's okay, because we can just, there we go, take that off. So now I've got two little beads, tube beads that are the same thickness, um, the same width. They're just nice and consistent in size and shape. So that's those guys. And I've got a few of them here that I've already done. And they're all ready for the next step. Um, but I'll show you how to make these ones next and then um, we'll do the next step of them all together. Okay, so for this one here we need like a triangle piece. Um, so for these ones, how I like to do them to get them that size is um, I cut my little triangle strip from, it starts at one and a half centimetres wide. Now, this is where I can't tell you anything about inches because if it's not half an inch, three quarters of an inch or an inch, I have no idea. So it's just a little bit more than half an inch and uh, that's as much as I can tell you. I suppose it's maybe, if they're, if they're eights, then it's, no, they're not eights. There's too many of them to be eights. One, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven. See, that doesn't sound right either. Anyway, more than a half, less than three quarters. <laughs> but you do the size that you want to. So then, knowing that, I do need to use my little ruler and do some measuring, which is never really, you know, something for me. So mine are one and a half centimetres wide. So I'm just going along the bottom here and marking one and a half, three, four and a half, six, seven and a half, nine, like so. So that's one and a half centimetres all the way along. Then at the top... I want to make a mark that is, so this this bit here is, this little tick here is going to line up with the, with the corner of my piece of paper, like this. We're not going to use that bit because it's only, a, you know, it's not a, a straight piece. So from here, to, I need to work out what is halfway between my one and a half and my three. So that would be um, maybe about, oh, is that even one and a half? I would say if I mark it one and a half up here, then... This line here, let's have a look. Is that going to be straight? Yeah, so I need to make this. This is why I make SVGs, so I don't have to measure every single time. I measure once and then I'm happy. So one and a half and then let's say it's um, two point, it would have to be 0.75 would be the middle. Let's try that. So if I go from here to 
there. That looks about right, like that. Okay, so then from here, I'm going to measure, I'm going to draw my line from here down to here. Okay, so then I have like a little triangle piece and that's how we're going to work it all the way along. So now, if I go from here, just a second. Okay, sorry about that. I have this random alarm that goes off. It goes forever. I haven't figured out how to fix it. But while um, that was going off, I worked it all out. So now I can tell you. So my um, measurement down here is one and a half centimeters or half an inch or whatever you want it to be. Let's say half an inch. Okay, so then at the top, I need to measure in half of whatever that is. So for me, it's 0.75 centimeters. For you, it would be quarter of an inch. And I'm gonna make a mark there. And then from there, I can just go along from that point and measure whatever it is that I measured down here. So mine is one and a half centimeters. So I can just go all the way across. I can measure one and a half, three, four and a half. But what I'm doing is I'm making them these marks here halfway between these ones down here. I hope you can see. Okay, and then you don't have to rule the lines, but let's do it anyway. Just so you can see that I'm just gonna join up all of those odd points with the ones down the bottom. So we have these funny little triangles, really long triangles like that. So then on here, I've got this, this piece here is no good, but I've got one, two, three, four, five, six beads right here that I can cut out. Now, I forgot to mention, I'm using um, a piece of eight and a half by 11 paper. So this is 11 inches long, and that will get me a bead that looks like that, which I really like. Okay, so let's cut these out. So then I just take this on my cutting board and I'm just going to cut down those lines. So I'm going to line that up there and there and cut that bit off. So we're not going to use that piece. I need to get a new cutting board because that didn't work very well or I didn't press hard enough. I'll just trim that bit off. We're not going to use that first little strip. I'm going to turn it this way because I don't know why. And I'm going to line it up with that score line, that line down here. It's not perfect, but you know, whatever it is. And I'm going to cut them down like so. And then this one along here to that tip there. And cut that down. And then I'm going to shuffle that over there, cut that down, and then I'm going to shuffle this over and trim this down. And then we'll just cut this last one. So normally I would use um, scraps for this as well, but for the sake of this exercise, I thought I would use a whole sheet so I could show you how to measure them, although my measuring is not that flash. So <laughs> anyway, the width here is going to be the width of my bead. And then as long as you make it, we'll make it how, long, how wide your bead is. I just happen to like them this like this, so that's, how, that's what my measurements are. Okay, and then I'm just going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to roll them. So I'm just going to roll this around and then roll it like so. Once we get started, just roll it. Now, it's better to try and keep this sort of centered, uh, but I'm not sure that I ever do. But because we're not putting glue on it till near the end, we can fiddle with that once we're done. Okay, so then I'm going to roll that down, down, down. It has definitely got the wobbles on. These ones are definitely trick trickier to roll. But once you get the hang of it, you're okay. So I'm just rolling that one, rolling, rolling, rolling. 
And then when I have this little tail, it's quite long, but it's very thin. I put some glue down that little tail and continue rolling it. And this is the only thing you want to make sure that this um, tail is centered with the piece that it's rolling onto. You don't want it going off on an angle like that. So I'm just going to roll that around. Now I've got glue on my fingers. Roll that around. And I've gone off, so you know, just fix that up as you go. I swear I'm much better at this when no one's watching. <laughs> okay, so there we've got a little bead. Now, I'll just give it a second to set up before I start fiddling with it. So actually, it doesn't look too bad. So, but because we haven't glued it, um, we can we can move it around. See like that. So you can you can center it up and get it the way you want it. And then we've got this little conical guy here. All right, let's do another one. Okay, so I'm going to roll this one again. Sorry about all the glue stuck to my fingers. And off we go. So these ones I'm not putting any pattern paper on. But you could do it with pattern paper um, if you glued it to your cardstock before you rolled it, I think. But I'm going to paint these. I like them when they're painted. And then I can have them any colour I like. And of course, you could make your own paper. Um, you know, you could you could paint some paper. Um, you could paint, um, or you could do some stamping. You could use spray mist. There's so many things you could do to make your own individual beads. I'm um, I'm just showing you sort of the construction, and then you can you can do whatever you want to do. There we go. Another one rolled. So. Because we've only got glue on the centre bit, we can actually do this. If I put my fingers under here and pull it down, pull that that middle section down, pull and push, sort of push up this section and pull down this section at the same time, then what you end up with is like a conical. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> so there's a, a different kind of bead, um, but. Let's let's stick with this kind. So I just push it back up and there and then it's you know this more symmetrical kind of bead. Okay, so that's how I make those. And of course, as I say, whatever the width is of your strip will determine how wide your bead is from, from hole to hole, and however long your strip is will determine how fat it gets once you've rolled it up. So you know, just play around with the cardstock or the material that you have. Let me show you the next step of how I make my beads anyway. So then I take these little guys here. Actually, let's start with these. I'm going to paint these. Um, I know they're already pink, but I'm thinking I'd like them to be, um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If I've got a bit of glue stuck on them, not necessarily happy with how they look, so I know this this will seem crazy, but I'm gonna paint I'm gonna paint my pink <laughs> my pink bead pink. So this is just called dusty dusty pink. I don't know what brand it is. Um, I put all of my paints into these little bottles once I get them and then I can um, store them all together and I can see at a glance what kind of beads I've got. And then I've got this metallic pearl. Oh, let's start with this. Okay, so I'm just going to paint them. So I just put them in a little cocktail stick and paint. And you know, once you get a bit of a production line going, um, I, I did this one day when I wasn't feeling like doing anything else and I had Dozens of little beads all lined up, all different colours. It was great fun. 
but I want these for a particular purpose so that's why I'm making these ones and I'm using that paper so then I have this little bit of floristry foam you know that you put flower decorations in and I just bung them in there like that so let's do another one and um, I've got some gold paint and I think I might like to do some of these gold as well but I'll just show you the one color for now because otherwise we'll be here all day which I don't mind but you might <laughs> you might have something better to do <laughs> okay and then I've got one more that I made earlier I'll just give that a little oops I'm trying not to oh, stop running around like so Why won't you stay on? Stop moving! Oh my god. Now I'm talking to inanimate objects <laughs> on YouTube. <sighs> okay, so they're a little bit pinker. Um, I'm just going to wrap my little... Um, I'm just going to wrap my little um, paintbrush here in a baby wipe that doesn't dry out because I forgot to bring some water in didn't I so we'll just pop that in there and then I can get it off my fingers at the same time okay so then while they're drying let's get that out of the way oh you know what look great on these and I'm going to do some of these after the video music paper I've got some antique music paper now how cute would that look there I'm gonna do that I'm gonna do that <laughs> I've got oh I could be doing this forever okay so then these guys um I like to coat these in um UT ultra thick embossing powder so just one second because I got everything out except for my heat gun right I'm back I got my heat gun and I just cleared a few things away while I was there so I like to cover these in this ultra thick embossing powder in the clear um, but before that we need to um, put a little coat of Mod Podge on them so the reason why we need to do that is we need to seal them somehow so um, it doesn't have to be Mod Podge you could use matte um, matte medium or but something even um, PVA you just need to seal them because otherwise the ultra thick embossing powder can soak through the um, the paper and change the color and you don't want that to happen so I've got a little bit of Mod Podge here just in a little container and um, I've got a little brush so I just stick it on my little cocktail stick and just give it a good brush all the way around make sure it's sealed make sure you get the top and the bottom and just seal them up like that it will make them stick to your cocktail stick a little bit too so maybe don't shove them on there too much if you want to get them off again okay so that's that little guy there I'll pop him to the side and then I'm just going to do that with these ones as well. This one doesn't want to stick on the edge. So it's going to be difficult as well. But I'm not going to talk to it because it makes me look a little bit crazy. <laughs> if that's possible to look any crazier. Okay. This video feels like a real kerfuffle for me. Um, my my phone's gone off um, and I had to start the video again and then that stupid alarm went off and then I forgot my my um, heat gun uh, yeah I'm usually more organized than this I promise you <laughs> okay so I'm just gonna do this I'll just do this last one so that you get the idea Okay, so we've got a few to work with. Like so, go around the edge. And go around this bottom. Right, do. And then I'm just going to leave that to dry and hopefully it won't take too long. 
Right, so we've got three of each, that's good. I'll wrap this one up in that little bit of um, baby wipe as well. And close that up and put this to the side. And the ones that we painted should be pretty dry by now. Not bad. So all we need to do, all we, well, all we do now, all I want to do now, um, we could put a little bit of bling on here, like a little bit of sheen. That'd be nice. Oh, I've got this pink. See, I can't stop myself. This is a close to my heart. Um, it's like a dusty pink glittery pen. I don't know, like a Winker Stella sort of thing. Um, so if I maybe if I just brush that on there, it's going to change the colour a little bit, but it's going to give it a little bit of shine, I think. Otherwise, we could put a sprinkle a little bit. We could put a bit, bit of glitter glue on there. You could do anything. That one's cute. Okay. It'd be better if this was clear, but I'm going to work with it. Just want to give it a little bit of... Can you see it's got a little bit of, like, pearlish powder to it? I mean, I could use, I could use my pearl powder. Whoops, this one's run away. But I don't want to waste your time. I probably already am. <laughs> okay. All right, that'll do. Okay, so now I'm just going to take my Versamark and make sure it's... This is a pretty grotty one, but that's okay. Um, now I've just made that wet, so maybe I'll just give it a quick hit with the, glue, with the heat gun. Okay, so I think this little guy's dry now. So I'm just going to roll him on my Versamark um, stamp pad. So this is the clear um, stamp pad for embossing. So when I'm pretty happy with that, then he's going to stay on there. So I can just dunk him straight in like so. You might pay to get some of the um, embossing powder off your um, off your cocktail stick. Probably shouldn't have dunked him in quite so much because that's going to make it hard to get him off. But anyway, then when you're happy with that, then you just get out a heat gun and give it a little give it a little blast with the heat gun. While it's still warm, I might do it again. This time, I'm just gonna I'm gonna drop it on because I think I might end up with a little bit too much embossing powder on my stick, and it might make it a bit tricky to get it off. Ask me how I know. <laughs> uh, there's got to be a better way to get this off. Mate. Okay, so then I can just give this a little blast again. So I do like to keep spinning it a little bit um, in my hand until I until it's kind of cooled down a bit so you don't get too many of the blobs. But can you see the finish on that? I don't know if I'm holding it up to the right spot. Sorry, um, I'm only using my phone. But it's got such a beautiful finish to it. Beautiful. Okay, so let's do one of these ones. Let's do this one. This one looks pretty. So we just do exactly the same thing, just roll it along. So this has already got the Mod Podge on it, so it's nicely sealed. And I think it might be better to um, just, you know, throw it on like this rather than dip it. I mean, you can. And I missed a bit there. I'm just worried that it's not going to come off the stick. Okay, and then I'll just do this one and then once, while it's still hot I'll do it again. OK, 
Okay, so that's that one done. Two coats, keeping it moving so you don't get drippy bits. And I think that should be good now. Right, so let me pop this aside and I'll show you the next bit I do. I've got to get this off the stick. <laughs> oh, that one came off nicely. I'll just leave that for a second. So this one, I'm pretty happy with. I would use it just like this. I just need to try and get it off. Okay, and it came off. Okay, so get that. It's just so, it looks so pretty and you can just do so many colors and um, so many different designs. I think it's fabulous. So you could put some stickles on there. Um, there's just so many things you could do with it. And I think it just, it looks so lovely. So you can use, um, nail polish or some kind of clear lacquer but I just think the um, beauty gives it a really nice smooth finish so that's that one okay so this one is now no longer hot so now I'm going to use this embossing powder this is gold embossing embossing powder and this is Sizzix and it's really fine it needs to be quite fine okay so I'm just going to put a little tiny bit that's more than a little tiny bit um, just in the in the lid here and just sort of get a nice thin layer and then I'm just going to take my little guy here and on this end I'm just going to put a little bit of emboss um, of the Versa mark on that end like so and then just touch it into this embossing powder so it looks like this I don't know if you can see oops I nearly spelt embossing powder everywhere Okay, and then I'm going to hit this with the gun. Now I'm going to be pretty careful because what will happen is it will it'll mix in with the UT and start dripping down the edge. Now a little bit of drip I'm happy with, but I don't want it to go crazy. So. While it's still hot, I'm just going to dip it in one more time. Just really, really lightly. like so and then just finish that off just like that so can you see how the gold I don't know if you can the gold is coming down a little bit on my bead but I, I don't mind that I think that looks quite pretty but it also you know because it gives it like a gold ring around the edge so then I can just do the same thing on the other side I just I, I don't want to touch it too much. <laughs> okay. All right, so into the Versa mark again. I don't want to put my finger on it. Normally I wouldn't do it so quickly, you know, but I'm trying to show you. All right, so then I'm just going to dip it. Didn't get much there. Might be all right. Okay. So I'll do this one and then I'll do one more quick dip. I might need to do one more quick dip. And that's it. And so then I have this little cute little bead with the um, pattern paper and I've got a little bit of gold embossing and the edges are done with the gold embossing as well so it looks quite nice and it's nice and shiny and I can make them out of any kind of pattern paper I like. So that's how I make my beads. Um, so I've got these conical ones and these tube ones. I don't know what these are called. But anyway, um, I thought maybe you might be interested in seeing how you could make your own beads like this. If you like them, um, that then that's great. Um, if you don't, maybe you like making them another way and that's good too. Anyway, thanks very much for hanging around and having a look today. I'm going to keep making a few more of these and then I'm going to make some little dangly charms and things to go in my journal. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.